Hi guys, good evening. Hi Flor. Hi. How are you? How are you? I am fine, and you? Good, how was your day? Excuse me? How was your day? Fine, I work all day and I play with my daughter. It's very entertaining all day because my daughter played all day. Your daughter? You have a daughter? Yes. Oh, how old is your daughter? Seven years old. Mm, okay. <laughs> yes, I imagine. She might like to play all day, right? Yes. <laughs> you have a do you, you do you, you have uh some? kids? Yes, I have two. One is nine years old and the other one is thirteen. Uh, very good. Mm -hmm. They're boys. <laughs> boys. Two, two boys. boys. Two boys, yes. <laughs> oh, but that's nice. I'm happy that you have a daughter. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah, I met it. What I'm going to ask you is to put on your name here to put the picture of you or your your daughter. That way, I get to see your faces because you the the majority of students never turn on the camera. But it would be nice to have a picture of you in Zoom, so that way I have a picture of how you okay. look like. Maybe you can upload a picture. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Luis, okay. Luis, good I, I, I'm fine, thank you. And you? How, good. How was your day? Um, really, really relaxed today. <gasps> Tell me, what did you do? I I woke up too late <laughs> today uh, around. Uh, 10 o'clock a.m. Okay. Um, um, I take a lunch and after... Um, a brunch, um, I, because breakfast and lunch <laughs> is brunch. Uh -huh. You're right, you're right. <laughs> and, um, and after, uh, um, I, I was watching TV all day, really. Mm, okay, nice. Okay, I try to, to, I, I try to take a nap all day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's good that you enjoy your days off resting. That's good to hear. And what did you watch on TV? Did you watch any movies or any um, series? What What were you watching? Uh, I was watching a series <laughs> uh, in, in Netflix. Um, but I finished uh, to see... Uh, I, I was watching... Let me, let me remind. I don't remind. Uh, remember. Mean Hunter. Ah, Mean okay. Hunter. Mean Hunter. And you finished the season? Yeah, uh, the second season. Okay, super. Okay, thank you. Joanna, Samuel, good evening. How are you guys? I will recommend you that series. <gasps> super, send me the link so I can, I can, on the group, so I can. Okay. <laughs> Joanna and Samuel, good evening. How are you guys? How was your day? Fine, thank you. My day is was. Uh, hard because I work all day. Mm. I must imagine. Okay. Where do you work, Joanna? I work at Galerias. Mm -hmm. But I work in my house. Home office. Home, home office, yes. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Yes. And it's and double job, right? Because you have to do things around the house and also work on your computer. Yes, I have <laughs> problem with. Um, with my daughter class. Ah, yes, because she has to connect to Zoom or to any platform for to receive the classes. And sometimes you have meetings and things to do. Yeah, it happens to me too with my kids. And homework. Too. And homework, uh-huh, I know. My poor kids, I tell them, right now you cannot use a computer. Do it in your notebook. We're going to take pictures and then send it. And they're like, wow. no, I want to use a computer. They don't like to write. I tell them, write <laughs> on your notebook. The notebooks are there. You haven't used them. So use them. 
They want okay. to just use a computer to do it. How do you say ellos son más tecnológicos? They are more technological. Uh -huh. okay. Yes, it's true. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Samuel, Antonio, good evening. Marisela, good evening. How are you guys? How was your day? Hi, I'm good. A uh, little bit uh, gray and rainy day, but. <laughs> good. Yeah, hopefully it's going to rain. It rained, right? Early this morning. Oh, uh, yeah. For a couple of minutes, it rained. Yeah, yeah. Okay, super. Samuel, Marisela, good evening. How are you? Hi, good evening. Okay, guys, so today we're going to be covering another topic, okay, from the platform. So can you guess, can you pick a guess what's our topic for today? Do you know what the topic is? We have gerunds as our grammatical topic, but before that topic, I have something interesting from a lecture that you have on the platform. So let me go over there really quick so that way we get started on that. So if we go to the platform, you have this, I need a job. Hmm. I have a question for all six of you or seven of you that are connected. Do you guys have your resume in English, your CV? Do you have a copy of your CV, your curriculum vitae, your? Yes, totally. In English and in Spanish or just in Spanish? Uh, I have both. Just in Spanish. Ah, both just in Spanish. Only okay, Spanish. only Spanish. Well, today we're gonna get some tips from this uh, fellow friend on YouTube. Okay, so we're gonna go over. So you can start elaborating. I think it's a good time now that we're home office and that we're <laughs> home and that we're studying the language. It would be super great that you guys start creating your CV in English. Okay, that way you can have both copies for future opportunities. Okay. First, we're going to watch this, watch this small video, and then I'm going to go into the topic, which is how to write a CV in English, okay? A little tips. We're just going to go through a couple of tips, and along the way, in the other intermediates, then we're going to go over more into deeper details on how to write and how to better structure a CV in English, okay? So let me know if you're able to see my video and... Listen to my video if you're able to watch it and listen to it. Other languages? No. Ready to listen to the conversation? This time. Can you listen to it? Yes. Okay, super. Just checking. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, thank you for joining us again. Ready to listen to the conversation? This time you will listen to job and job requirements as well as gerunds and short responses. Remember to always practice the conversations with a friend. I need a job. Part A, listen and practice. I'm so broke. I really need to find a job. So do I. Do you see anything good listed on the internet? How about this? A door-to-door -door salesperson to sell baby products. Like diapers and things? No thanks. And anyway, I'm not good at selling. Well, I am. I might check that one out. Oh, here's one for you. An assistant entertainment director on a cruise ship. That sounds like fun. I like traveling, and I've never been on a cruise ship. It says here you have to work every day while the ship is at sea. That's okay. I don't mind working long hours if the pay is good. What's the phone number? It's 555-3455. Five, 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 five. Part B. Listen to Brad call about the job. What else does the job require? Holiday Cruise Lines. Hello? I'm calling about the assistant entertainment director job that's advertised online. Is it still available? Yes, it is. There's just one thing we didn't mention in the advertisement. Do you speak any other languages? No, not really. Oh. We're really looking for someone who can speak at least one other language. We probably should have included that in the ad. I'm sorry. Okay, so what could you guys understand from the listening part? 
from the audio. Can you tell me? What were some of the things you were able to listen to? Um, okay, uh, one of the guys, uh, it's broke. He, he had no money. Okay. So he now wants to get a job. Uh, they're looking for a job list on the internet. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> one of them um, saw uh, uh, an advertisement uh, of, of a job posting. Okay. Um, but it wasn't uh, like really, I don't know how to say it, but um, his profile didn't fit. Didn't match. Yeah, didn't match uh, the requirements. So his friend uh, tells him that this is another uh, job mm -hmm. in there <clears throat> in a cruise. So okay. he read uh, the, the requirements mm -hmm. and he says that, that it's okay. He will call to the number, to the contact <laughs> number to see if the position is, is available. <clears throat> and the person who answers the phone uh, tell him that they need uh, for that position someone who speaks more than one language, at least two languages. So um, the, the guy says he just speaks English. So he, he didn't, he did not met the, the requirements. And this person tell him that they should have post or, or include that information in the advertisement, in the advertise, sorry. Um, because that's a very uh, important requirement for the position. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, and actually, and you know, nowadays it's super important. Nowadays is not, if we are not competitive, if we don't speak more than two, nowadays you're asking for a third language. Nowadays, if the more languages you speak, the better. Now it's not just English and Spanish. Mm -hmm. Now they want Portuguese. Now they want French. A little bit. They're not asking for 70 or 80% because they know they're not going to get it. But at least a potential future person who actually speaks more than two languages and that's something that's happening at, with enterprises in in our country why because we're having a lot of inversion investment coming from germany so they're going to require people speaking a little bit of german or french a little bit of french and mandarin chinese why not my dad used to say that Mandarin was the future language. And you know what? It's very easy to speak the language or to understand the language. It's very difficult to draw it. But to speak it is very easy. It's not that difficult. I was taking a couple of classes previously, and I can tell you that. So learning languages is not, it's something that we have to, it's a must nowadays for a, as a job requirement from other companies. Very good. Okay, so talking about three things. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about job requirements, which are going to be placed on the CV. Also talking about being broke. Um, when you don't have money, people tend to say, I am broke. So that's an expression when you don't have money. When, you're out of, when you run out of money, you say, I'm broke. I don't have money at all. So that's the meaning for broke, for those of you who did not know the meaning. And listed on the internet are all those ads that you see for example, like in LinkedIn, we do have websites nowadays like LinkedIn and even on Facebook that you can for O, no, not OLX, there's another one. Oh, eh, Computrabajo or what's this other one, Job Shark? Or Te, coloco. Te Coloco. Okay, so there's like many websites in where there's like listed ads, they're called listed ads. That's how they're called. Mm -hmm. Like. Los clasificados, those are listed ads because they come in lists. And those lads usually have job requirements. Age, for example, what else? What are some job requirements? Can you, can you tell me a couple of job requirements? We already have one, which is how many languages do you speak? But for example, we have languages. Also, sometimes they have an age, right? People who are between this age and this age, right? Sometimes they ask for a specific age. What other job requirements have you noticed whenever you're looking for a job? Experience. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Years of experience. Mm -hmm. Excellent. What else? Years of experience. Um, what would be an okay. appropriate years of experience? Uh huh. What would be the appropriate? What do you think they're looking for? Maybe more than two years? Yes. Maybe two or more years, right? Mm -hmm. Depends the job. 
depending depending on the job too okay depending. but it goes from two up right i have never seen like at least six months of experience i have seen like they usually ask for two <laughs> yes. or more two or more it could be 10 15 20 more years yes. of experience. but two or more years of experience uh-huh what else um, academic level very good academic level mm -hmm. what else skills uh-huh what are skills um maybe uh, knowledge or some uh, specific computer. software or hardware very good skill like computer <laughs> like uh -huh, exactly now if i was to ask you because it happens i remember it, i was interviewed once and they asked me do you know how do you say just to give you an example a photocopier like if you and i'm asking you guys do you know how to use a photocopier yeah yeah okay yeah. but if i take okay if i yeah but you're like yeah yeah like 10 oh, yeah, percent or it, yeah yeah like 60 percent 70 percent or I I I I I work in is, is technology. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I I sell in in a photocopier, a scanner, printers. So okay. I I need to to learn about the 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 all the all is the information about that. And the reason I'm asking you this because this is very common. Working with HR, I have worked with HR in the past, and it's okay that you say I'm not very good with it but i'm willing to learn so it's okay yeah. to say that yeah and some people say uh yeah with doubt so it's better to say i can a little bit but i'm willing to learn you know to enhance yeah. that skill right so never be scared of saying that you're willing to learn how to use it to 100 percent, right because for example photocopiers you can use you can you can actually um use an hp photocopier but what if they come with a rinoco and they're like no idea never use yeah it's it's, it's depending the 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 brand the the, the photocopy because no not all the photocopy is the same process to 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 make or, or do uh, for example when you need to expand in the 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 uh, doing Mm -hmm. Exactly. You need to 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 maximum to one hundred one hundred fifteen. One hundred fifty. Uh huh. You need to 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 expand the or you need to 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 is a uh, when you need to uh, copy a reverse. What is inverse? In reverse. Uh -huh. I think. Yes. It's a, Front and back. You say front yeah, and front, back front, of a page. Front, uh -huh. front and front back. And, back. And, the, and, and the same and the same page. It, On the same page. Uh huh. Exactly. That is so very skill. complicated this time. It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> it's a skill that you need to master with practice. And I have seen people doing it. No, this one is not okay. They rip it and they try another one. It's a. It's something that you do with practice, right? So never be scared of saying that you're willing to learn and that you're willing to just get hands on and just right so it's okay to say i don't know how to do it but i'm willing to learn and i'm a fast learner so that's the key in any interview it's key to say that you're a fast learner not to say um no i'm sorry i don't know how to use it just keep it to i don't know how to use it then eh, you lose right so it's it's good to always say that you're willing to learn and etc mm -hmm. what other academic mm -hmm. level skills do they ask us for what else uh, what other skills technology we're, we're talking about technology but what other skills do you think have a master. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Okay, perhaps if you have technicals, masters, okay, PhDs, okay. uh huh. And also the technical courses or any seminar like FEPADE, okay, those are the like in support FEPADE, they have they have a lot of weight in the country. At least here, in support and FEPADE are they have a lot of weight, right? There's another one, I think it's Cosalco or Casalco. There's another one, so like three of them that I'm, if I'm not sure, just don't remember. At least in, in all diverse, you know, in a, in a diversified field, for example, not in a specific field. I guess for technology, I don't know, you have the A plus certification or for, you know, every, every industry has its own forte. But in general, for 
emotional intelligence and all those leadership skills, a lot of them wait like Sepade and Insafort are very good at them. Okay, well, let's jump into the video. That way we can start talking a little bit more into creating your resume so you can get start, so you guys can start practicing, okay? Okay. Okay. Give me a minute and let me know if you're able to listen to the video. Wait. For a job. Everything right now is going great. You've been. Can you listen to the video? Yes. Okay, super. So you're applying for a job. Everything right now is going great. You've entered your name in the first field and you've even spelled it correctly. But then you come to the next part, which says, please upload your resume. Oh no, I don't even have a resume, you think. And what's worse, you don't even know how to properly write one. Fortunately, at some point, your future self traveled back to the past and uploaded an entire video about how to write a resume, full of amazing tips and tricks that are nearly guaranteed to help you land that job. This is that video. Thanks, time travel. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing some useful tips that you can use to craft a great resume. And along the way, we are going to establish the five, maybe six, depending on who you are, sections that should be on that resume. Before we go on though, I do wanna mention something important. There is no best way to craft a resume. Go online looking for resume tips and you're gonna find 18 billion differing opinions, all from so-called resume experts. Why? Well, think about the purpose of a resume. A resume is a brief summary of your skills, your achievements, and your experience and what's a resume it says a resume it's a summary of your skills your achievements and your experience very important okay all three of them okay and how those relate to the specific job or company that you're applying to. And the job of that resume is to get your posterior into the chair across the desk from a hiring manager so you can explain in further detail why you're the best person to hire. So your resume is essentially an advertisement. And this is key. It's an advertisement. It's how you're selling to the company in paper, right? So it's like a sale. So you need to impress the person you are selling to. And as I'm sure you're well aware, advertisements come in all sorts of different forms. There's no one perfect way to craft an advertisement that'll work every single time. So keep in mind that you're crafting an advertisement. There are definitely general best practices that you should follow, but nothing so specific as never have an objective statement or always have an objective statement is going to apply in every single case. And this means that there is no one way to craft a perfect resume. There's no perfect resume template. All you can do is seek to make yours great. And to the end, let's get into the tips and sections that you should have on yours. All right, first and most importantly, you're gonna wanna have a section that lists your favorite anime. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and Space Dandy are great picks, yeah. but if you have Naruto as number one, you're probably dead in the water. Wait, I read that wrong. Actually, first section is gonna be your name and contact information. That actually makes more sense. So obviously this section should include your name. And if you're submitting this resume directly to a company, it should also include your phone number. I'm gonna stop there. Okay, very important, two things. Not only the way you write your name, but also your email. And one of the tips that I've seen in the past, and this helps a lot, some people have emails like, I know I'm sexy and I know it at hotmail.com, for example. <laughs> <laughs> so try to stay away from your like personal, or I know that when we created our first email back in the days, we didn't think of this, right? We didn't think ahead that we needed a professional email. So they always advise that it's your first name, dot your last name, like Beatriz.salaverria at gmail.com for example to to make it more professional whenever we're presenting a resume so just in case you know someone or in case you guys still use that i'm sexy and i know it at gmail.com just have in mind that you need to have a more formal email address whenever writing a resume because that's the first that's one of the you know the first pieces of of information that you're actually sharing there at the top to the potential companies right also your phone number your email and your name complete name as well 
number in case they want to call you directly for an interview. Though I will note that if you're going to be posting your resume online somewhere publicly, like on a personal website, I would leave the phone number off just so you don't get spammed. In addition to all those basics, you should also include a website and portfolio if you can. And I think this is really, really for the US, it's very important that they include a website. It's like one of the requirements. For countries like El Salvador or Central America, it's enough just to add your LinkedIn account. Okay, like your your LinkedIn, you could get the link from, from your LinkedIn uh, social web. That's like, it, it counts like a website for a lot of the companies in case you're wondering what a website? No, it's LinkedIn. If you do it through LinkedIn or if you do it through Tecoloco and you have a, a direct link uh, that this potential, you know, people can actually access your information from, then you can give that. If not, just LinkedIn, it's okay important. So believe it or not, I've been running my company for almost 10 years at this point, and I have hired several people during that time. And every single time I've set up to hire somebody, the thing I'm most interested to see on applications is examples of completed work. And I am not alone in this desire. So use the rest of the tips that we're going to go through in just a second to craft your resume and make it shine as best as it can, but also give the hiring manager an option to go look at a portfolio or some examples of the work that you've done if they so choose. That brings us to the next section on your resume, which I believe believe should usually be your work experience. And the first thing that I have to say about this section is that you should be putting your most relevant experience first given the job that you're applying for, which means that you should be tailoring your resume to every single position you apply for. Talking about work experience, I have a question for you guys. Whenever you do it in Spanish, do you do it by chronological order or do you do it by the most relevant? Like the, you know what, you know, because then again, your eyes are catching. So you want to see something very important at first and then just like not the so important jobs that I have had in the past at last. What do you guys do? Do you do it like by years, chronological, you know, going backwards or how do you make up your resume? With the most important job you have had in the past or do you do it by chronological order? Um, chronological order, but uh, in reverse order. I mean the... The latest first and the oldest one at, at the bottom. Okay, okay, good. Mm -hmm. What about the rest? I do the same thing. But okay. I think my resume, resume mm -hmm. is, is wrong <laughs> in general. Well, actually, then again, there's always opportunity to modify it and modify it as, as you go along and always add information. If you went to a sem seminar last month, Add it, always add it, and always upload it also to LinkedIn. It's always important to have it updated because then at the end, whenever you wish to apply, you don't have to just remember dates. It's, it's, it's more difficult to leave it all at last according to this job hunters, number one. And number two, according to his feedback, it's important to always write the most relevant job you had first, regardless of the chronological order. For example, if you have had 10 jobs in the last 20 years, but out of those 10 jobs, perhaps the most relevant for you were five of them in different orders, mm -hmm. then just pick the one who was the most important. I, I don't know if it was the role, if it was the experience, if it was the company, and then you balance whichever was your best experience first, and then your last one throughout those 10 or 20 years of experience. Mm -hmm. So that's what he's trying to tell us. It, because it says that you can add, for example, if you were a babysitter, and I, oh, I was a babysitter for six months, and then I worked at, in a shoe, at selling shoes, and then, oh, but then I was a supervisor, and then, I, and then you started going up, 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 and it's good. It's good to actually, you know, have it in a chronological order, but what he's stating is not to, eh, you can explain that in words in an interview, but then in paper, it's good and it's relevant, at least five of those 10 jobs that you have had in the past, the most relevant or the most important ones that you have had. And then the, the following five, you can talk about them throughout your interview and explain that person how you have grown and how you started here and then how you grew to become a supervisor. Just to give you an example, based on his ad, 
advice. Yeah, it's more work, but it is worth it. Now, for the people out there who already have established careers and who aren't jumping into a completely new industry, reverse chronological order usually achieves this. But this tip is very relevant for students and for new grads because you often have great summer experience, great internships, things like that, but then you have to make ends meet during the semester and you flip burgers or mow lawns. But if you're applying for a great job at a tech company and you had a great tech internship last summer and then afterwards mowed lawns just to make some extra pocket money, you don't want to put the lawn mowing first because if I'm a tech recruiter and I'm looking at your resume and the first thing I see is lawn mowing experience, I'm probably going to move on to the next resume. I'm not going to look down further and see that you have great experience on your second item that's listed. The most important thing you can understand about your resume, other than the fact that it is an advertisement, is that recruiters don't have a whole lot of time to look at it. You might put a lot of time into it. You might put all your work into crafting it and making it the best that you can. But when it gets to a recruiter's desk, it's probably in a stack of hundreds of others. And according to an article put out by theladders.com a few years ago, the average resume only gets six seconds of attention before the recruiter makes a fit or no fit decision. So you want to make those six seconds count. And this is where I wanted to land. If you see, according to one of those articles on Lathers, which is a very important website for recruiters, it tells you that it only takes you know, we're eye catching, then we're not going to read the entire and I have seen that people don't really read the entire resume, they just read the first part of it, maybe just like 30 or 40% of the resume. And if it's eye catching, if it gets your attention, then they call you. So what what he's trying to say in the end is that make sure that the most important, the most relevant information always goes at the beginning, right? That's eye catching for the person who's actually looking or reading at it to make it interesting and attractive. Count. All right, on to the next main tip. When you're listing out your job descriptions, highlight achievements rather than duties. And if you can, back up those achievements with numbers. The reality of the situation is that hiring managers are not that interested in what your duties were at your last job, what you were expected to do. They're a lot more interested in what you actually accomplished, especially if there are specifics involved. So for example, listing something like organized an introductory program attended by 3,500 incoming freshmen and helped book four professional speakers and workshop leaders works a lot better than than just responsible for organizing introductory program for new freshmen. And I will say for this tip in particular, you may want to go into the description down below after watching the rest of the video because I'll be linking to my own resume which has some great examples of using specifics and numbers in that work experience section. But of course there is And that's also very important what he just said. Do you guys whenever you write your resume, if you have been a supervisor or if you have been uh, if you have had a group of people under your supervision, do you actually mentioned that on your CV, like I've led, for example, if you have been a leader of 20 or of 100, of I, I've taught more than 200 companies in the past, something like that. Do you actually use numbers or you just give your general idea of the things that you have done? Mm -hmm. Guys? Hello, can you listen to me? What do you guys think? Do you use numbers? Do you say, oh, I have worked with 200 employees in the past, or I have been a supervisor of 10? Have you used numbers? Or you just say, oh, I've been a supervisor in the past, or I have worked with many people? Or do you actually use specific numbers? Uh, usually, it's better to to use numbers to specify the amount of people that you have been uh, supervising or working with, mm -hmm. uh, because it tends to be a needle mover. The fact that you have uh, managed uh, a certain amount of, of people, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, like the example he was giving here. Uh, That's better to say uh, I've, I've worked with three thousand five hundred incoming freshmen than saying just, I work with many freshmen in the past, or I work with many people in the past, or being more specific, that way the person has a better vision that you have worked with a numerous amount of people, that you're willing to work under, under, under stress situations, et cetera, right? Okay, super. 
becoming freshmen and helped book four professional speakers and workshop leaders works a lot better than just responsible for organizing introductory program for new freshmen. And I will say for this tip in particular, you may want to go into the description down below after watching the rest of the video because I'll be linking to my own resume which has some great examples of using specifics and numbers in that work experience section. But of course there is one elephant in the room for many of you, which is the question, what if I don't have any experience? Well, this is known as the experience paradox. Many jobs need you to have experience before they'll hire you, but to get experience you need to have a job, right? Now, while the experience paradox is difficult to overcome, it is not impossible to overcome. And one thing that I want to note here before I talk about my main tip related to it is that a lot of companies offer internships. And when a company builds an internship program, they're often looking for promising candidates that show a lot of potential, but maybe who don't have a whole lot of industry experience. So if that's what you're lacking, then show some other qualities and you might get hired in those kinds of positions. But here's my main tip. For many, many fields out there, nobody has to give you permission for you to go and do work that's worth showing off on a resume. Want to become a web developer? Well, then spend a few weeks learning how to build a website or web app in your own time, build it, host it on the internet, and list that on your resume as work experience. My friend Martin actually started working with me as a web developer, and I hired what do you guys think about that? I think this is very important. And for example, what are you doing right now? Like learning English through a, through Insaforp? There's many others, right? The, like this, um, all those learning websites, you know, where you can do it for free or you could do it whether paying a modic fee, right? Like, I don't know, next you, any other ones that help you develop technical skills or any other type of skills, that also counts. You don't have to go physically to a location. You can do it on your own. Like if you're self-learning, like right now that you're learning English through through Insafort, that also counts. So it's important that you guys add it because it actually counts and it counts as, as experience too. Um, like he was saying, like going, learning how to build your own website or creating apps and doing it through tutorials, I don't know, and getting that experience for a very long time. I'm not saying it's gonna be just, oh, I, I you know, you're, it's not gonna count if you did it just for like a week and then you just gave up on it. No, it has to go mm -hmm. through, you know, two or three months that you guys have been, because then again, you have to prove that experience once you start working for that company, right? And it's, it's not fair that you lie that way. Like if you're gonna actually get experience, get experience well, Master it, and once you master it, then uh, add it to to your CV. But I think it's important. All the things that you do, I don't know. There's tell me names of websites. I know this. Uh, um, what's this Mexican? This Mexican rich man has a website with Fundacion Crip and um, Empleate para el Trabajo. Uh, I think it's Charles called. Slim. Uh -huh. Okay, so him he created a website too for people to learn things yeah how to be a bartender yeah, cool. how to um, or something like that yeah so that's a, and it's a free website and then that counts you they're training you for free for you to learn something right online so i think it counts so it's good if you guys can take those those online courses for free go ahead and it it adds as experience too in case and this goes for you, for those of you who want to add more experience to your cv Okay, like what he was saying. Or for those uh, new guys who do not have experience at all or have never done an internship. Mm -hmm him because he had built a blog in his spare time and I knew that he knew WordPress design, HP, CSS, all the skills that I was looking for in a web developer when I needed my website rebuilt. That one is easy though, right? What if you want to compose film scores? Well, get yourself a copy of Reaper, find some cheap or free virtual instruments, and go rescore public domain movies that you can get on archive.org. Or ask a friend who's a videographer if you can score their work. Post it online and use that to get bigger and bigger gigs. And what if you want to be a doctor? All right, admittedly that is a tough one. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend that you can get resume worthy experience in literally any profession just by tinkering on a computer in your bedroom because, well, you can't. Some professions out there are just more gate kept than others and many require experience with equipment that you just cannot get on your own. But there are still things that you can do to stand out. For example, my friend Ryan, back when he was a pre-med, volunteered for an organization called Doctors Without Walls. And due to his experience with that organization, he was able to put together a really, really 
really impressive med school application, which got him accepted into several schools, even though his grades as a pre-med weren't as good as some of his peers. All right, let's move on to the education section, which on my resume actually comes after my work experience section. So I guess the first step I wanna talk about here is how to strategically place your education section. So if you are in college or if you just got out of college, it may make sense to put your education section before your work experience, especially if you're trying to get into a more established field with bigger and older companies who may still put a lot of value on the school you went to and your academic achievements. But as a general rule, solid, impressive experience is gonna matter to most companies more than the school that you attended, especially for newer companies and companies in fields like design and technology. So as your experience gets more and more impressive, as you accumulate more of it, think about highlighting that before your education. That just leaves us with the question of GPA, or grade point average. Do you include it on your resume or do you leave it off? Well, here is what I was told when I was in college. If your GPA is a 3.2 or above, put that on your resume right alongside your degree in your school. If not, leave it off. For those of you who are asking what's a GPA, for us it's like the cum at the university. So what was your cum when you were at the university? Oh, at 8, 7.5, 8, 8.5, 9. So what was your cum? So do you add that to a resume? Do you guys add that to a resume? Or do you don't? Tell me. Yes, it's important the cum for the scholarship in applying in the university, and sometimes it's important and and uh, different codes or the the work too. It's inform it's a good information for to um, the performance of the people and 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 um, is and. Um, in the interview because it's a, um, a, this knowledge, the, the, the show this knowledge, the, the person in the interview, and not necessarily the, um, the experience. It's uh, my opinion because sometimes uh, it's a good manner here uh, mm -hmm. uh, the transmitter, the, the experience, a older, a older person, but it's important the 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 skills or the attitude and the mm -hmm. people or in the, in the different person. Okay, yeah, and now that you're mentioning that, um, I think it is important. For example, if you have had a high cum or a high GPA, if you have studied abroad in other countries, if you have had a high GPA or a high cum, that um let your interviewer know that perhaps you didn't do a final a thesis or a final job because if your grades were really high perhaps you didn't have to do a final you know didn't a seminar or anything you just graduated with honors because you had a very high gpa or a very high so it's 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 eye-catching too in the sense that it gets their attention to say hey this is a very good candidate also i have known yeah from hunters, people who have belonged to programs like we were talking like the Gloria Creed, Superate. Well, Gloria Creed, Superate, there's another one. I just forgot what's Carlos, his name. Carlos Lim, Aprende.org, and the Carlos Lim is a good. Yeah, like there's like, but the ones where kids study in the morning, eh, they go to school in the morning and in the afternoon, they go to this other program, which is like Superate. They're like two different programs. and. What happens with these programs and how they pick the students are they pick students who have very good grades. So they have their academic in the mm. mornings and in the afternoon they learn English, literature, and I don't know what uh, other skills. So they, it's like if they were going to school two times in the day. And at the end, it's rewarding because companies like this type of kids because their, pro their, their profile is very committed. You know, they're very good kids and it doesn't really matter if they have experience or not they know that their profile is good because they come from programs like Superate or Gloria Creed. I, I, I don't know, there's like three or four more. I just don't remember the names, but those type of programs in where they show the kids, uh, not they belong to this program because they have really good grades. So I think that's also important to add all those programs you have belonged to, or if you have been part of Tech, or if you have worked with World Vision, or if you have worked with, with an ONG, I mean, all of that, it's also eye-catching, okay? Yes, teacher. 
It's good. And the reason that I'm including this in the video is that I generally agree with this logic. And here's why. Your resume's job is to get your foot in the door. Just like your Tinder profile's job is to get you a date, right? So in general, you're not going to go advertising your flaws front and center on your Tinder profile, unless you can find a way to do it that's endearing and funny. And even then, that doesn't apply as much to the job market as it does to dating. But once you're dating somebody, they are naturally going to learn about your flaws. And if those flaws are outweighed by the good stuff, then they're probably going to stay with you. And it's the same with the job market. Once you get into that office and have an interview, you get a chance to explain why your GPA might not be as high as you you'd like it to be. Maybe your skills and experience outweigh it and you realize that putting more effort into other projects was more beneficial than trying to get perfect grades. But again, your resume only gets a few seconds of attention, so you don't want to lead with things that are going to throw up red flags. Speaking of red flags, let's talk about the skill section. First and foremost, do you even need to have a skill section on your resume? Well, the answer is it depends on who you are. So typically it's useful to have a skill section if you have specific certifications or skills that the job is going to be looking for. So if you have a Cisco networking certification at CCNA, or you're really proficient in Adobe After Effects or CAD, or you know how to code in Node.js, it can be really useful to put those things in a specific skills section. This is especially useful since many bigger companies these days use what are called applicant tracking systems or ATS systems. Actually, no, that doesn't work. It's like ATM machine. It's kind of redundant. Anyway, ATSs basically scan resumes for specific key terms that the company is looking for so they can cut down on the number of resumes an actual human being has to look at. So if you're applying to a company that you know is looking for a specific skill, you want to make sure that skill is listed on your resume, provided you're actually proficient in it. Otherwise, your resume might get tossed in the bin before anyone looks at it. All that being said, don't include a skill section on your resume if all you're going to include this is this is something important and i think i want to i want to share this tip i don't know if it's if you guys know it but one of the things that i have learned along the years in working with many companies is that it, before going to a job interview you need to read information about the company you're going to be working for so you're not going to go and you're not going to jump into an interview without not knowing what the company is about right because they might ask you tricky questions throughout the interview so it's very good that you know the palm you're going to be working for like the palm of your hand so if i was to ask you right now guys do you you know if you were if you're working for an x company how much do you know about your company you might say hmm i just know what i have to know for my area but it's good that you know more than that because you work if you're working in the sales area it's good that you know what the customer service area does or what the i don't know the engineering department does etc so you need to know a little bit of each area in your company so um going into this it's very important that when creating your resume and this is something this is a tip that i got from from a recruiter in one of the companies is that you need to have a you need to create every time you apply you need to create like a different resume so for example, if I'm a teacher and I'm going to apply for a call center, just to give an example, I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn in my teaching resume because they might not be interested in reading all my teaching experience, but perhaps all my customer service experience and all the knowledge that I have with all the KPIs and they're going to go for strategic words. They're just going to say, okay, she has computer knowledge. How many words does she type per minute? So you're going to look for precise information on my CV. So it all depends on which, it all depends on the position you're applying to that that's going to be a so you need to have different resumes depending on the position that or for the position that you're applying to and i got this from from this recruiter and it actually works so never copy paste and just print out because sometimes the, the information on your cv is not updated and perhaps you forgot any and you have to be careful because it happens that a lot of recruiters call and sometimes even the phone number on the CV is not the right one. It's an outdated one, an old one, perhaps one of your first ones and you forgot to change it. So they will never, they will never reach you back. So it's important that you look for the, and look for those, uh, you know, details and skills. Talking about skills too, it's important that you specify which programs, because you can say Microsoft Office or M Office and then, but Office, you know, has many programs, Publisher, PowerPoint, Excel. So it's good that with graphics, you say how good you are with Excel, how good you are with Word, how it's good, you know, but to always specify how good you are with each program inside Office, right? Because then again, that gives them a better vision of 
your knowledge of your skill for this precise program or how good are you a senior developer are you a junior developer if you're if you're a developer okay so it's good that you emphasize because those are the keywords that they look for when hunting for a candidate <clears throat> something like Microsoft Office. It's a general term. And more importantly, do not list soft skill terms. Don't put hard worker, don't put good communicator on your resume. Do not let me catch you putting these things because the laziest person in the world can write hard worker on their resume. And because of that, for many recruiters, it's a red flag. Why are you putting down hard worker instead of listing experience that proves your work ethic? Bottom line, if you have specific skills, if you have specific certifications that you know that what he just said about soft skills, it's true. Some people, I don't know if you do, but some people when they write their CV, they say, I'm very responsible, I'm very hardworking, I'm very committed, I wake up early, you know, like so many props about you, right? Like so many good things and that's good. But then again, it's true, how are you going to prove that? So it's better to highlight skills, you know, on your CV than say, I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm handsome, I'm beautiful, I'm gorgeous. And you know, it, it's just be very specific and try not to over, over throw yourself flowers on paper, okay? So be careful with that because then again, that's a red flag. What he says about red flag is when, mm, this is not a good profile, too many, right? So it's bad to over, overreact when writing, okay? So be careful with that part. they're looking for definitely include a skill section or at least make sure they're listed in your work experience section otherwise a skill section is probably not needed but what you do need are the last two sections that we are going to talk about today extracurriculars and awards these sections can bolster the work experience on your resume by showing the clubs and organizations that you're a part of by listing any leadership positions you have taken in those clubs which you should definitely list and by listing any awards honors scholarships anything like that that you've won as well these sections are essentially a non-pathetic way of writing hard worker on your resume. They might not convey specific skills, but they do convey other traits that recruiters are definitely looking for. A hard work ethic, the ability to adapt and change, the ability to work independently, and your likelihood to step into leadership roles. So absolutely make sure that you have these two sections on your resume as well. Of course, crafting your resume is just the first step to landing the job that you want, and alone it is not a very strong tool for that purpose. It needs to work in tandem with a well-tailored personal brand, a mix of online and offline platforms and methods of communicating to help you to show off your skills and establish your expertise in your industry. And this includes things like a personal website with a portfolio and your social media platforms, but also the way that you introduce yourself and the way that you engage and seek out others. And if you want a good guide on how to start building that brand, I'm going to recommend Hamza Khan's personal branding course on Skillshare. His course is short and won't take up too much of your time, but it's also pretty comprehensive and it covers all the important bases, including the preliminary work of figuring out how to tell your story and present yourself, along with the specifics of channel selection, building a website, and more. And getting access to that course means you'll also have unlimited access to the more than 28,000 other courses that are also on Skillshare, and that can boost your skills in web development, digital animation, graphic design, audio production, and lots, lots more. Membership on Skillshare is super affordable, starting at less than 10 bucks a month. Plus, once you have that membership, you can go over to the popular courses of the business section where you'll find my course on productivity skills as well. And if you want to try out Skillshare for free, you can actually get a free two-month unlimited trial by being one of the first 500 people to click the link in the description down below and sign up. Big thanks, as always, goes out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. And as always, thank you guys for watching as well. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button. You can also subscribe right there to get... I'm going to stop there because he went over a lot of things. Well, yeah. this Skillshare is like Domestica, kind of. It's pretty yeah. much like that. But there's many other courses that are free. Yeah. You don't need to go over them. Um, guys, so just to wrap it up, what are some of the things that you guys learned today about going over your resume? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me, highlights. Highlights that you will apply from now on in regards to your resume. I will be sharing this video with you yeah. for you to watch it again right. on your own. But tell me, what are some highlights? Mm -hmm. yeah. What are some things that you learned about this video today? Tell me. Put the numbers. Okay. Put numbers. Okay, include numbers. Uh, the, the, yes, include numbers and uh, put the, the most important experience mm -hmm. first. The um, most relevant experience. 
experience and most important most relevant okay that's that scene okay super yes. maricela thank you anybody else in the resume information information personal information experience in in the mm -hmm. task it's a short short and sweet task and the uh, ex and the uh, most important information and the hours too or other experience or course and in the knowledge too in the performance okay super yeah actually and be detailed be detailed very detailed specific right the more specific you are the better for them to know mm -hmm. Don't just write your ideas in general. Oh, I've been a supervisor. Oh, in customer service. Oh, in sales. Oh, just be very specific. What type of sales? Outbound, inbound, right? What type of sales? Mm -hmm. Cold sales. I don't know. There's many types of sales. So just be very specific with what you're writing on, okay? So in another session, hopefully we get the opportunity. Or it, whenever you want to share your CV with me, I'm more, I would be more than glad to see it and help you guys out, okay? I have done this in the past. I've, I've actually tutored my students in the past with writing resumes in English. Because two things I think it's, are very important for you to have. Presentation cards in Spanish and in English, the same way you give them to people in Spanish, have your presentation cards in English. And your CV ready to have it there in English for any open position you know, in the future that you would like to apply to. Never be scared. I'm, I will be more than glad to help you guys out with this particular topic, okay? Well, but guys, time's run up. Incredible this hour. Okay, thank you for this week as well. I will see you guys next Monday, which is next week is, your la is our last week. We're doing the final exam on Thursday for those of you or questions that you guys might have about the platform on Thursday. So we have until next week to finish the platform. So, but we're doing a great job. I'm super proud of you because we're, we're working with the platform and other exercises too. So I'm super happy. A, have a fantastic weekend and I will see you next week, okay? Bye, okay. guys. Thank okay. you. See you next. Week. You're welcome. Sure. Bye. Bye. See you nice next week. Nice weekend. You too. Bye bye. Bye, guys.